Hello, beloved. Welcome to the Greater River Service. This is Pastor Andrew here. So thankful to God for the opportunity he has given us to come to you for our early morning service today. This is the day the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Today we thank God that he has given us the opportunity, even in the midst of a crisis, even in the midst of uncertainty, even in the midst of fear, when the whole world is crawling under their beds, everybody's afraid for their lives. We are here to praise the Lord. We are here to worship the Lord. And so today it is going to be a special service and uh, we don't have music going on, but we're going to praise the Lord with our voices. We're going to praise the Lord with our hands. So I want to challenge you this morning where you are as you're watching this broadcast, you know, to just lift up your hands to the Lord and just thank him. Say, Lord, I thank you for today. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be alive. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Thank you, Lord, that I can come in your presence, that I can come to worship you. Just lift up your voice to the Lord and just welcome him in your house, in your bedroom, in your living room. Father, we thank you for you have given us this opportunity, God. We don't take it lightly, but we thank you, God, that there are so many people who do not have this ability to worship, but we have the opportunity to praise you, to give you glory. So we thank you for each and everyone who is watching in from all over the world. Father, we bless them, oh God. We send your word. We send your presence to meet, oh God, your presence to permeate their living rooms, their bedrooms, oh God, their living rooms, their kitchens. Those who are traveling right now on the plains, oh God, those who are traveling uh, in their cars, oh God, we pray that your power will be present to heal, to deliver, to set free, to turn lives around in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We give you glory for who you are. You are a good God. You are a good Father. You are our ever-present help in the time of need, in the time of trouble. So we will not be afraid because you are with us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. So, Lord, we lift up our praise today. We lift up our praise today. We say that be thou glorified, be magnified, be lifted up in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you. We give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Wherever you are, I just want to ask you to lift up your hands. Praise the Lord. Wave your hands in the air. Clap your hands to God. Tell him, Lord, you're worthy. We thank you. Give him a praise coming from your heart. You know, praise is not just about the instruments. You know, instruments are just an accompaniment. But the praise comes from your mouth. The praise comes from your heart. The praise comes from the you know, the deepest places of your soul unto God. If God has been good to you, you don't need a piano. If God has been good to you, you don't need somebody to encourage you. You just got to come out of the depth of your heart and praise him because he is God. Praise him because he is a healer. Praise him because he's a deliverer. Father, we thank you and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God is a good God. And I, once again, I want to welcome you. If you've just joined us, this is our very special service today. Uh, today, our Sunday morning, we usually meet at 4 p.m., but because of the current situation, we're not able to meet in a building, but we are going to come right to you. And we thank God for technology. We want to thank God for the heads of the organizations of Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, who have given us this opportunity to spread the gospel, to spread the word of God to people all over the world. So we want to bless them. We bless the companies. We bless the people, uh, you know, who support, who sponsor, you know, who make it possible. So we thank God that everything happens for a reason. And God knew about this. It is not a surprise. So I, I just want you to know that God is not surprised. God was not, you know, awakened out of sleep to see this happening. He has been seeing everything, you know, come together. But he is waiting for us as the church to stand up. And today that is what we are doing. We're not going to let our voices be silenced. We're not going to let our voices be, you know, put, you know, under, you know, uh, under a rug. But we are going to rise up and proclaim the name of the Lord. Proclaim the message, this good news, because the world needs to hear it. Amen.
And one thing I want to uh, uh, ask you today, if you're watching today, to share this message, uh, you know, on your uh, on your platform, within Facebook and Instagram, as you're watching this message, I want you to share. Click the share button. Share with somebody who is in fear. Share with somebody who is sick. Share with somebody who has lost hope. Because the words I'm about to share are life changing. The words I'm about to share, they're going to lift up your faith. They're going to elevate you. They're going to establish you in your walk with God. And you are going to walk with power and purpose because that is what God has called us for. Hallelujah. So today, I want to share uh, from the word of the Lord, and uh, the message I'm going to share comes from the book of 2 Timothy, from chapter 1 and verse 7. And this is a scripture that we all know, uh, you know, the apostle Paul writing to his God's son, uh, Timothy, and he writes to him saying, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Brothers and sisters, we are living in times, you know, uh, that are, you know, very unpredictable. You know, we never knew that ch churches all over the United States, most of the churches with the 250 members, you know, our mega churches would be shut down. I haven't seen this, you know, in a long time except for a blizzard. But to see, you know, our uh, institutions, our government, our schools, everything shut down. You know, this is, you know, uh, it is an awakening. It is a wake up call. And that God is calling us as the church. God is calling us as his people to rise up to the occasion because this is the time when we need to spread our light. This is the time where we need to shine our light in the darkness. Because as I speak, you know, when you go to the stores, you know, or when you go to the shelves, the shelves are empty. Water, you know, is almost empty. Food is almost empty. People are stocking up because they're afraid of what is going to come up ahead. But we as the children of God, we as the church, we are supposed to be the hope to the world. We need to let them know that, you know, it is not over. It is not all mayhem. It is not all, you know, uh, gloom and doom. But there is hope at the end of the tunnel. There is hope. There is light. God is still alive. That is the message we want to be able to project to the world that God is not dead. God is alive. And today as you're watching this uh, broadcast and you have been, you know, hopeless, you feel like, you know, uh, the end is about to come. You feel like, you know, uh, you don't know what to do. I'm here to encourage you and let you know that God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And we are going to speak this from the mountaintops, that God is alive, that hope is alive. Do not give up your faith. God is still in control. God is still on the throne. If God is still on the throne, no evil is going to befall us. You know, even as we, you know, uh, we're going through this plague, you know, that is uh, plaguing the entire universe, literally, you know, in China, in Europe, uh, you know, uh, here in the United States. So, you know, uh, we should not be alarmed because our God is alive and he still working and he's waiting on you and I to act and be his light. I want to read for you a scripture in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 19. It says, For the creation awaits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. You see, uh, these past weeks I've been talking about faith. I've been talking about how to be a child of God. I've been talking about the power God has given us. And the scripture in Timothy has told us, how God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So you are a child of God. And now in Romans, he's telling us that the creation, the whole world, is waiting in eager expectation for the children of God 
to be revealed. Why? Because we have the solution. You as a child of God, you have the solution. God has given us power. The scripture talk, uh, talks about uh, in Matthew 28, when Jesus was, before he was lifted up to the heavens, after he resurrected, he said, uh, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go out and preach the good news. Uh, you know, make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I you know, teach them to obey all these things that I have commanded you. You know, this is the power God has given us. The gospel is the power of God to save sinners. The gospel is the power of God to let people know that there is hope. There is healing. You know, even when there is uh, confusion, even when there is chaos, God is still on the throne and his power is still active. Even as I speak right now, the power of God is active. Are you living in fear today? Are you living you know, uh, in hiding? You don't know what is going to happen next. Have you lost your job? You know, have you ran out of food? Have you ran out of uh, you know, any sense of hope? I'm here to encourage you and let you know that this too shall pass. God is on the throne. God is up to something, but he is waiting for us to show up and show out. Amen. God is waiting for us to show up and show out and let creation know that he is on the throne. But you say, you know, uh, how do I know that? How do I become that? You need to be a child of God. How do you become a child of God? You need to be born again. You need to receive Jesus Christ in your heart. You got to believe him in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, that he is the son of God, that he is the hope of salvation, that with him all things are possible, that he is able to forgive your sins, that he is able to make you a new person. He says that all things have gone, the new has come. When you believe in God, when you accept his, uh, you know, his work of salvation that he did on your behalf, when you believe that he alone is able to save, he is going to change you. He's going to transform you. And the scripture says your names will be written from the, you know, the book of death and written in the Lamb's book of life. And the moment you make that decision, the moment you accept the Lord, you are a child of God. And what happens, you are now, uh, you know, a, a co-heir. You are now a, a participant. You are now a partner with God in bringing hope to the world, in bringing the kingdom of God into the earth. That is what God is up to. He said, the kingdom of God is here. Brothers and sisters, God is looking for you. God wants you to to you know to to get up this is not the time to hide under the bed this is not the time to be in fear this is the time to show the world that our God is good, that our God is faithful. You know, I want you to pick up your phone. You know, uh, you reach out to the people you haven't heard from, from the people who are in hiding, the people who are in fear. Let them know that you are for them. That is what the scripture has told us here, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. This is the time, children of God, for us to show the love of God. You know, in your neighborhood, people are all in their apartments, in their homes, in their neighborhood, in their, you know, in, in, you know, in their comfort zones. We need to show up. If it needs knocking on their doors, if you see them, you know, in the aisles, in the parking lot, you know, ask them how they are doing. Show them the love of God. If you see them downcast, ask them if you can pray for them. Ask them if you can encourage them. Is everything okay? I just want to let you know that it's going to be okay. Things are going to be fine. God is on the throne. Things are going to be better. We are the ones with the message of hope. While the, you know, the stock markets are going down, you know, every sign, you know, in the world system is showing that things are bad. We are supposed to show the love of God. We are supposed, you know, to show the power of God, the compassion of God. Is your neighbor, you know, uh, you know, uh, do they have supplies? Do they have everything they need? This is the time for the church to show up and, uh, you know, there are so many churches right now with food banks. Do you know any leads, you know, where needs can be met? You can share that information because 
each and every one of us has a need in their lives but you can be the person who can directly supply the need or you can lead them to where they can find their needs met so this is the time for us to rise up not only in sharing the good news but in being practically helpful showing the love of god and so as i finish i want to talk about the power of god the power of god is alive today to heal and deliver are you sick in your body are you infected with the coronavirus we believe that the same power that was able to raise that sick man we read about a few weeks ago who uh, his friends laid him you know with his bed through the roof and jesus was able to heal him right away are you showing signs are you feeling weak in your body we're gonna pray the power of god to heal you because our god is able to heal our god is able to save and today we want to uh, stretch out our hands to you in faith if you're sick in your body father in the name of Jesus. We pray for each and everyone who is sick in their body, for each and everyone who is having signs of sickness and the dizziness and the, uh, stuff going on in their life they don't understand. We speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. We speak healing. We speak deliverance. We speak wholeness in the name of Jesus. Are you going through an emotional breakdown? Are you going through, you know, a loneliness? And are you, you know, you, you, you just feel lonely. We pray for the Spirit of God to comfort you. Jesus said that I will send you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. He said, I won't leave you as orphans. We pray for comfort right now. We pray uh, that God will comfort you right now in your time of distress, in your time of need, in your time of emotional heal, emotional crisis. We pray for healing to happen right now in the name of Jesus. Has your heart been broken? We pray right now in the name of Jesus that your heart will be put together by the power of God. The power of God is able to heal and deliver. And today, all you gotta do is open up your heart. All you gotta do is receive because this power is you know, transferable. It can go through this uh, video broadcast and come to you in your room. Do you wanna receive the Spirit of God to speak in tongues, to, uh, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? It is possible. I remember as a teenager, I was watching Benny Hinn uh, ministering and he said, you're going to speak in tongues. You're going to receive the Holy Spirit. And I was on the TV and as I received, I started speaking in tongues all of a sudden, all through the television. I was in Africa. He was in the United States. The program wasn't even live, but the power of God was so present that it went through the television into my spirit and I was able to speak in tongues. And since that day, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Today, you can receive it as well today by faith in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for today for your word. We pray for power. We pray for your love. And to all those who are watching this broadcast today, heal them, touch them, bless them in a very special way in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray this message blessed you this morning. And I want to caution you as well. The, the same scripture we talked about talks about God giving us a sound mind. And the sound mind, sound mind means having common sense, using your mind correctly. You know, we've been uh, you know, instructed by the government, by medical personnel to wash our hands. Make sure you take good care of yourself, wash your hands, you know, do not get so close to people, you know, uh, try to avoid the large gatherings of people as much as you can. Be careful, don't touch your face, you know, read all the guidelines that, you know, that the government is sending out and let us be healthy because God has called us for a time like this and he wants us to be, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, he wants us to be a channel, a bridge of hope to the world that is hurting. All right. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Share this message and tune in on our uh, social media. We're going to be sending messages, Bible studies every day as usual. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we're going to continue uh, praying and believing God to let this plague go away from us because it is something uh, that is happening, but it can be, you know, uh, overcome come by the power of prayer. God has given us the authority. God has given us the power. So we need to use our authority. The scripture says that if my people who are called by my name 
shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, uh, you know, and uh, uh, repent of their sins. You know, I'm going to hear from heaven and I'm going to heal their land. So we believe the scripture. We believe in the word of God that we have been sinful as a nation. We've been sinful. We have, you know, broken God's law. We have uh, abandoned God. We not. I'm not saying that God sent this plague, but you know, some things will happen. God will allow them to happen for us to wake up and seek his face. So we repent before God and we ask him to heal our land, to heal our world. Amen. So let's keep in prayer. Let's keep in fellowship. Let's keep in uh, uh, in agreement. Let's keep in the word of God. Make time for the word of God. You know, turn the TV off. Turn that cell phone off. Get in the word of God. Get on your knees. You know, join with your family. Join hands and pray. Because if there is a time when we needed to pray, this is the time to pray. If there was a time when we needed to fast, this is the time to fast. If there was a time to look up to God, this is the time to look for, uh, you know, up to God. And also, this is a great time of revival. This is a great time you know, of uh, reaching out to people with the love, with the power of God, with the compassion of God. This is a time where people's hearts are ready to receive because they need hope. And you and I have got the hope through the word of God. So I want to believe, God, that it's going to do great things. Everything is going to be fine. But we have got to be, you know, uh, on our best. We've got to do everything we need to do. We need to pull out all our weapons and fight the good fight of faith. Because God has given the weapons to us. And God is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. All right, friends, thank you so much for tuning in today. Make sure that you tune in again. We're going to be sharing more updates and let you know when we'll be able to meet again physically in the building. But until then, we're going to be coming to you live here uh, on social media. And I know God is going to bless us in a very, very special way. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. God bless you.